Welcome to another series of Biomedical Engineers TV. In this series, we will know about ultrasound machines. In this episode, we will cover introduction to ultrasound machines and classification of ultrasound machines. So, let's begin with the introduction to the ultrasound machines. It's easy to credit Dr. Ian Donald and engineer Tom Brown with the invention of ultrasound. However, the actual technology dates back to the late 1700s and it went through plenty of discoveries and changes over the years. The first time ultrasound was used for clinical reasons was in 1956. It was used in Glasgow by an obstetrician named Ian Donald and an engineer named Tom Brown. These two men developed the first prototype system for ultrasound, but it wasn't perfected until the end of the 1950s. The history of the ultrasound dates back even further than the 1950s, however. Here's a look at when ultrasound was first studied all the way through to the way it's used today. In 1794, Lazaro Spallanzini, a physiologist, became the first person to study anything related to ultrasound. He was studying echolocation among bats. While this is an ultrasound as we know it today, it was based on a type of ultrasound physics. It wasn't until 1877 that we see anything else come about to do with the ultrasound. Jacques and Pierre Curie were the first to discover piezoelectricity. This discovery was very important to ultrasound, since the ultrasound transducers or probes receive and emit sound waves by using the piezoelectric effect. Another discovery helping to shape ultrasound as we know it today came in 1950. This discovery was made by Paul Langevin, a physicist, after the Titanic sank. Langevin was commissioned to create a device that would detect objects found on the bottom of the ocean. He ended up inventing a hydrophone, which was referred to as the first transducer by the World Congress on Ultrasound in Medical Education. Let's know about classification of ultrasound machines. Ultrasound machines can be classified into three categories. One is conventional ultrasound machines, the second, portable ultrasound machines, and the third, handheld ultrasound machines. Conventional ultrasound machines were bulkier systems in the early days and as development in the technology and the computers became smaller, the conventional machines became smaller in size. The conventional ultrasound machines consist of ultrasound transmission and reception section, PC section, where the sampled ultrasound signal is converted into video signals, and the user interface, where the user can operate the machine. This type of machine can give you high resolution images or video output. In classification, the second machine is portable ultrasound, which most likely looks like a laptop with an ultrasound probe. This machine can be used for intra hospital transport or kept in operating rooms. This type of ultrasound has a disadvantage that you have to change certain probes for different applications. Most trained radiographers don't recommend this type of machine because of the resolution difference between conventional ultrasound. The third type of ultrasound machine is handheld ultrasound machines. For over 10 years, small portable sonographic machines have been becoming an established concept in the emergency medicine departments to expedite the medical work. The addition of the wireless application to sonographic probes permits a quicker ultrasound scan of the patients directly in their rooms, especially to obtain vascular access, implant cardiovascular electric devices, or measure the neuraxial depth. This also facilitates the establishment of an electronic archival system for an immediate doctor consultation from everywhere. Recently, 
a handheld wireless ultrasound machine able to connect to any iOS or Android device through secure Wi-Fi, has been built and launched in the medical world. First, let's know about types of scanning done in ultrasound imaging. The most common scan used for abdominal studies is the linear scan. A linear scan is when the ultrasonic transducer remains parallel to the surface of the object being examined and the sound beam is perpendicular to the transducer movement. A linear scan is when the ultrasonic transducer remains parallel to the surface of the object being examined and the sound beam is perpendicular to the transducer movement. Only the location of the transducer is changed, but the angle of the beam is held constant. The most common scan used in echocardiography is the sector scan. The second type is where the scan is made by rocking the transducer about a fixed point such that the sound beam covers a sector. Compound scanning. And third is merely a combination of linear and sector scans. Let's know about linear sequential arrays transducers. The scanning lines are directed perpendicular to the face of the transducer. The beam is focused but not steered. Linear array transducers are available with 512 elements in currently available ultrasound scanners. Generally, up to 128 elements are selected at a time for operation. As is obvious from the diagram, the field of view with a linear array arrangement is limited to the rectangular region directly in front of the transducer. Let's see about Curve Linear Arrays Transducers. A Curve Linear Array scans a wider field of view because of the convex arrangement of the array elements. Curve Linear or Convex Arrays operate in the same manner as the Linear Arrays and therefore, even in this case, scan lines are directed perpendicular to the transducer face. The third type of array transducers are linear phased array transducers. The arrangement of the elements is similar to the linear sequential arrays, but the scanner steers the ultrasound beam through a sector-shaped region in the azimuth plane. The present linear phased array systems have up to 128 elements, and all the elements are used to transmit and receive each line of data. This arrangement has the advantage that the scanned region is much wider than the footprint of the transducer, thus making them suitable for scanning through restricted acoustic windows, such as in the case of cardiac imaging, wherein the transducer has to look through a small window to avoid the obstructions of the ribs and lungs. And the fourth type of array transducers are two-dimensional phased arrays. A two-dimensional phased array has elements in both the azimuth and elevation planes. Therefore, two-dimensional arrays can focus and steer the acoustic beam in both dimensions, thereby to produce a volumetric image. Let's know about types of transducers used in ultrasound machines for different applications. Let's begin with straight linear array probes. The straight linear array probe is designed for superficial imaging. The crystals are aligned in a linear fashion within a flat head and produce sound waves in a straight line. The image produced is rectangular in shape. The probe has higher frequencies, 5 to 13 megahertz, which provides better resolution and less penetration. Therefore, this probe is ideal for imaging superficial structures and in ultrasound guided procedures. Second type of probes are convex probes. The convex ultrasound transducer type is also called the curved transducer because the piezoelectric crystal arrangement is curvilinear. Moreover, the beam shape is convex, see picture below, and the transducer is good for in-depth examinations, even though the image resolution decreases when the depth increases. The footprint, frequency and applications 
also depend on whether the product is for 2D or 3D imaging. The convex transducer for 2D imaging has a wide footprint and its central frequency is 2.5 MHz to 7.5 MHz. You can use it for abdominal examinations, transvaginal and transrectal examinations, and diagnosis of organs. The third type of probe is cardiac probe. There is an interesting aspect of cardiac imaging that has had a profound effect on the nature of the probes. Due to the presence of the ribs and other acoustically hostile tissue in the ray path, echocardiography suffers from imaging artifacts due to reverberant noise. The introduction of harmonic imaging has proven to be highly successful in reducing this noise. As a consequence, the importance of transducer bandwidth has become critical in cardiac transducer design. Today, most cardiac systems transmit at frequencies between 1.5 and 2.0 MHz and, of course, receive signals at frequencies twice that range. Next is transvaginal curved probe. A pelvic ultrasound is a non-invasive diagnostic exam that produces images that are used to assess organs and structures within the female pelvis. A pelvic ultrasound allows quick visualization of the female pelvic organs and structures, including the uterus, cervix, vagina, fallopian tubes, and ovaries. Ultrasound uses a transducer that sends out ultrasound waves at a frequency too high to be heard. The ultrasound transducer is placed on the skin, and the ultrasound waves move through the body to the organs and structures within. The sound waves bounce off the organs like an echo and return to the transducer. The transducer processes the reflected waves, which are then converted by a computer into an image of the organs or tissues being examined. Let's know about transesophageal echocardiography probes. Transesophageal echocardiography, TEE, is a test that produces pictures of your heart. TEE uses high frequency sound waves, ultrasound, to make detailed pictures of your heart and the arteries that lead to and from it. Unlike a standard echocardiogram, the echo transducer that produces the sound waves for TEE is attached to a thin tube that passes through your mouth, down your throat and into your esophagus. Because the esophagus is so close to the upper chambers of the heart, very clear images of those heart structures and valves can be obtained. At last, but not the least, is pencil probes. Pencil transducers, pictured below on the right, also called CW Doppler probes, are utilized to measure blood flow and speed of sound in blood. This probe has a small footprint and uses low frequencies, typically 2 MHz to 8 MHz. Furthermore, there is the endocavitary ultrasound transducer type. These probes provide you with the opportunity to perform internal examinations of the patient. Therefore, they are designed to fit in specific body orifices. The endocavitary transducers include endovaginal, endorectal and endocavity transducers. Typically, they have a small footprint and the frequency varies in the range of 3.5 MHz to 11.5 MHz. At the end, let's finish the video with some information regarding 3D and 4D ultrasound probe information. The key difference between 2D and 3D echocardiography is that 2D provides flat views of the heart, while 3D and 4D is based on real-time volumetric imaging providing a realistic anatomic display from virtually any desired perspective. 2D transducers are arranged in a 1D array 
which can acquire cross-sectional 2D images using piezoelectric elements, ceramics or single crystals. The most widely available type of 3D transducer is the mechanical transducer, which is low cost and achieves state-of-the-art image quality, although it cannot produce images in real time. 4D transducers are matrix array transducers, which generate an ultrasound pulse diverging from the array in a pyramid shape and produce high quality images in real time. This technology is used in obstetrics only for the evaluation of the fetal heart and adult echocardiography. Let's begin with Doppler mode. Doppler ultrasonography employs the Doppler effect to assess whether structures, usually blood, are moving towards or away from the probe and its relative velocity. By calculating the frequency shift of a particular sample volume, for example flow in an artery or a jet of blood flow over a heart valve, its speed and direction can be determined and visualized. Color Doppler is the measurement of velocity by color scale. Color Doppler images are generally combined with grayscale B-mode images to display duplex ultrasonography images. Doppler mode consists of color Doppler where velocity information is presented as a color coded overlay on top of a B-mode image. In continuous wave Doppler, CWD, information is sampled along a line through the body and all velocities detected at each time point are presented on a timeline. Where pulse wave Doppler information is sampled from only a small sample, volume is defined in 2D images and presented on a timeline. Let's know about A, B, C and M modes. A mode. A mode is the simplest type of ultrasound. A single transducer scans a line through the body with the echoes plotted on a screen as a function of depth. Therapeutic ultrasound aimed at a specific tumor or calculus is also A mode to allow for pinpoint accurate focus of the destructive wave energy. B mode. In B mode ultrasound, a linear array of transducers simultaneously scans a plane through the body that can be viewed as a two dimensional image on screen. C mode. A C mode image is formed in a plane normal to a B mode image. A gate that selects data from a specific depth from an A mode line is used. Then the transducer is moved in the 2D plane to sample the entire region at this fixed depth. M mode. M stands for motion. In M mode, a rapid sequence of B mode scans, whose images follow each other in sequence on screen, enables doctors to see and measure range of motion as the organ boundaries that produce reflections move relative to the probe. This was the basic mode of the ultrasound imaging. As we go on studying on ultrasound imaging, it's quite wide in application in the medical field. Hope we kept it simple for you to understand the definition of these modes. Thank you for watching. See you guys in the next series on Biomedical Engineers TV.